I made sure that my tryouts went great. When Ron, the basketball team captain, passed me the ball, I made sure to not lose it until I reached the paint area. My dad always told me that a winning team needs players who work well together. It wasn't about showing everyone how well I could shoot, assist, or rebound. It's not about being a star. It's about being a team player. Ron was impressed, I have to admit. Even if I was just a freshman, it was obvious that I wasn't just the best shooter in the tryouts. I was also working well with the other team members. But there was one guy named Jasper. I could tell he didn't like me. Shorty wants to shoot, he yelled. Let's see if that shrimpy can jump. So I showed him. I showed all of them. When the list finally came out, my name was on top. Michael, reserve point guard. My dad was so proud. Every time he had to clean up the school corridors, he told me that he would always look up to read my name. He wanted to tell everyone that I was his son. I wanted him to, but he told me it'd be better if no one knew about it. That's because I go to a private school that has an amazing sports program. My dad hoped that I'd get picked up by an agent by the time I graduate. Meanwhile, he didn't want me to be teased because he was just a janitor in the school. I really didn't mind. If my dad was proud of me, I was more proud of him. He worked hard to put food on the table. My dad's an honest man. He's very pleased with his job, since the children of the staff can go there for free. On the day the tryout results came out, my dad wanted to prepare a special dinner for us. While he was cooking, I looked around our tiny house. The paint was peeling from the walls. There was only one bedroom with my dad's lumpy bed flushed to the side. I slept on the sofa that was right beside the kitchen stove. My dad was so excited that he splattered oil all over the hot stove. When I came over to help him clean it up, he suddenly yelled, Don't use that rag! Too late. The rag in my hand passed over the open flame and caught fire. I quickly dropped it in the sink. That's the rag I used to clean up the science lab. My dad was still shouting. Then he laughed. I laughed too. Although we almost burned our tiny place down, we had a fantastic meal that night. All right, it was burnt sausage and mushy eggs, but my dad and I laughed and made plans for the future. Just four more years, son, he told me with bright eyes. I'm sure an agent will snatch you right away and we'll have a better life. He was so hopeful. But when I look at my dad now, six months into the school year, I can't even recognize him anymore. He's not old at all, but his back is bent like an old man. Being a janitor in my school is a lot of hard work. Most of the kids at school were rich. They were used to having people pick up after them. They toss junk in the trash can, but most of the time it falls on the floor. They leave dirty trays with leftover food in the cafeteria and never think to drop the trash in the bins along the wall. There's really no point in putting mats by the front door because nobody really wipes their muddy feet before going in. By the time all the kids have gone home for the day, the school looks like a war zone. And my poor dad is the one who has to clean it up. But admittedly, it wasn't all that bad before Jasper knew about us. During the initiation for the team newbies, Jasper thought it would be fun to break into the staff room. He told us to move all the things on one table to a different one. Follow me, Jasper whispered to the team. We crept through the pitch black school and went to the staff room. Jasper managed to pick the lock. I was nervous and sweating the whole time. I didn't want to get kicked out. I just got here. I don't think this is a very good idea, I told Jasper. Even Ron agreed with me. Come on, man. Don't be such a whiner, Jasper replied. They're not going to expel us because we have a shot at winning nationals this year. Come on. Are you all sissies? As much as I tried to be quick and quiet about it, the rest of the team wasn't. We made a lot of noise. Eventually, we got caught by the night janitor. He called the principal, who called our parents. That's when everybody found out that I was the janitor's son. Michael, the principal said with a slow shake of his head, I expected better from you. I thought that this school meant more to you and your father. Thankfully, we all got off easy with just detention for a week. My dad looked at me and I knew immediately that he understood. I just wanted to fit in. On our way out, Ron's dad's wallet fell to the floor. My dad picked it up and handed it back. Sir, I believe you dropped this, he said with a smile. Ron's dad took it back and said thanks. But Jasper had the nerve to call out, Hey, it's a good thing that we're here. Michael's dad didn't steal it because we were all watching. I bet he wanted to steal all the money from your wallet and maybe sell the wallet too. My dad's face turned red and I wanted to turn around and punch Jasper in the face. But my dad restrained me. This is why I didn't want you to tell them who I am, he softly said, but I think Ron and his dad heard it too. After that day, Jasper just got meaner in school. Every day, he made the biggest mess he could make. 
He overturned trash cans. He moved the desks and tables around. He poured juice on the floor. He even emptied the chalk box on the teacher's table. We've got to make sure that the janitor earns every cent of his pay, he would say maliciously. We're not running a charity here. And every day, it would be my dad's job to clean up after him. Don't mind him so much, Ron said to me a week after. He's jealous and worried that we might make you starting five. I tried not to mind Jasper, but I knew how hard my dad had worked. So I just decided to play ball and give it everything I've got. Just to show Jasper that I deserve to be in this school and on the team. One weekend, Ron had a party at his house. It was great. His dad even showed us his sword collection. A few of us stayed after the party to help clean up. But the next day, Ron asked everyone on the team, Did any of you touch a Japanese sword with engravings in gold? It went missing after the party. Ron wasn't even looking at me, but Jasper was. If there's a thief in the room, we all know who it is. Michael's the only one who really needs the money around here. I was shocked by his words. How dare he put the blame on me? Hey, I finally answered back. It's true that I'm the janitor's son. It's true that we're poor. At least we're honest. But Jasper just laughed. What I didn't know was that the rest of the team was starting to hate Jasper almost as much as I did. Two days later, we were surprised to see Ron's dad there. I know who stole my sword, he said with a growl. I would like you all to come with me to act as witnesses. We followed him, looking confused. He met the principal first, who took out a bunch of keys from his drawer. My dad was mopping outside the principal's office. Excuse me, sir, Ron's dad told him. Could you come with us, please? My dad gave me a puzzled look, but he followed. We all went to the lockers, and the principal stopped in front of locker 55. Hey, Jasper suddenly called out. What do you think you're doing? That's my locker. The principal didn't say anything. But Ron's dad turned around to stare at Jasper. I know you were the one who took it, he said. I know that you were planning to plan it in Michael's locker. I heard you saying that you were planning to get him and his dad kicked out of this school. Jasper tried to protest, but the rest of the team suddenly piped in. Yeah, said Greg, that was the plan. He said that he was going to plant the sword in Michael's locker after practice today, added Peter. That's not true. These jerks are just pulling your leg, Jasper stuttered but the principal had already opened his locker. There, in the very back, behind the school books and varsity jacket, was the Japanese sword, propped up beside an old pair of sneakers. I don't know how it got there, Jasper protested. Michael's dad probably put it there himself. He's the janitor and he can open our lockers. No, replied the principal. I'm the only one with the master key and I take it home with me every day. You can't do anything to me, Jasper yelled as a last resort. You need me on the team. We have a game tomorrow. An hour later, Jasper's parents arrived. They spent 30 minutes shouting and yelling. When it was finished, Jasper was expelled. Our practice went on into the night. Ron had to make a lot of changes in the game plan because Jasper was no longer with us. You're playing tomorrow, Ron said. You can do it. Too much drama was happening both on and off the court. But the next day, I had to get my game face on. It was a brutal game. I did my best to give Ron a clear shot every time he went for the basket. The game was tied with five seconds to go. I was the only one in the paint. Ron was being guarded by two players. Hey, Michael, he shouted and passed me the ball. I caught it. The clock was ticking. I had to make the shot. Suddenly, I couldn't hear anything anymore, except for my heart beating. I jumped. The ball left my hands, spinning slowly. All eyes followed its arc through the air. Everyone held their breath. When I heard it swoosh through the basket, all the noise of the court came back. The stands exploded with cheers. I did it. We won. Everyone on the team came at me grinning, shouting, and crying. Then my dad was there too. We trooped back to the changing rooms, still jumping for joy. Then my dad and I came face to face with Ron's dad. Great play, Michael, he said, clapping me on the shoulder. Then he shook my dad's hand. Hello, I'm George, Ron's father. I don't believe we've been formally introduced. You've got an honest and responsible son. I can see where he gets it from. I'm going to get straight to the point. I'm a busy man. I need an assistant. More than anything, I need an honest worker who's a great team player. Can I offer you the job? My jaw dropped. I saw them shaking hands. I also saw the principal looking at them with a proud smile on his face. In just a few weeks, our lives totally changed. My dad wasn't a janitor anymore. We moved to a bigger place. The paint wasn't peeling off the walls. I even got my own room. But let's not forget where we came from, he said, and I nodded. No matter what happens, my dad's still a hard-working and honest man.
and I want to grow up to be just like him. Did you like our story? Let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. My name's Kelsey, and you seriously won't believe what happened to me. One minute, I was living a normal teenage existence. The next minute, my life was flipped upside down, and I had to deal with something so humiliating that even telling you about it makes my skin crawl. Sometimes, we find out people aren't who we thought they were. And I was seriously in for a shock when I discovered the truth about this new friend of mine. It all started last summer. All my friends had summer jobs, and I didn't want to be the only one sitting at home doing nothing. It's not like I really needed the money because my family is pretty wealthy, but I was bored. So I applied for a job at a small cafe in town. It was like the cool spot where all the hip people hung out. Kind of like a student vibe. When I found out I got the job, I was so excited. The girl who interviewed me was slightly older than me, definitely a student, and she said she really liked my surname and that it was pretty unique. She had the most gorgeous long black hair and tons of cool piercings and even a tattoo. She honestly just looked like she belonged on the cover of some awesome rock and roll magazine. And I was like, okay, when I'm older, I want to be just like her. Her name was Rosie, and we somehow always seemed to be on the same shift. The more I got to know her, the more I realized how much we had in common. She liked all the same bands as me, and she even played the guitar, too. She was studying English literature at one of the local colleges, and I told her that's what I was wanting to study, too, and that my dad was a professor in English lit as well, and maybe she knew him? But she says she'd never heard of him and then changed the subject. At work, we'd always have our lunch break together, and I used to bring us cookies and other sweet treats to share. Sometimes, we'd go to the park and just lie there and chill. It was so nice. I started getting more and more excited about work, and I quickly realized how much I liked this girl. Rosie was everything I wanted to be, and yet I think there was something more. I was only 15, so I couldn't really understand what I was feeling. But I started to like like her. I never thought I could be attracted to a girl before, but she had this air about her that just made me feel excited. Like butterflies in my stomach excited. I realized this was the first girl I'd ever had a crush on, and it was such a new feeling for me. One day, when we were lying in the park, she rolled right over to me and propped herself up on her elbow and said, You know what, Kelsey? You're pretty awesome. My heart was thudding so much I was terrified she'd hear it, and I realized how much I liked her. I felt so shy, I didn't even reply. I just laughed and told her we better get back to work. That whole shift, I kept watching her and eventually plucked up the courage to ask her if she wanted to hang out after work. I told her my parents were out and maybe she could bring her guitar and we could jam. She was keen and said she'd drive over later that night. As I cycled home, I decided tonight would be the night I'd tell her I liked her. Wait, was this a date? Was she coming over as a friend or because she liked me in that way too? I was seriously overthinking it all. Either way, we'd have a nice night. Rosie arrived not long after I got home and I decided to give her a tour of our house. She couldn't believe how big our place was. I swear, her jaw literally dropped when I showed her our cinema room. It was so bizarre because it seemed like she knew where to go. I didn't even have to show her where her bathroom was. She asked if we could watch a movie instead of playing guitar, and I said sure. I told her to make herself at home while I went to make us some popcorn. As I waited for the popcorn to finish being made, I noticed Rosie was staring at our family photos in the hall. She reached out and touched one of the photos, and I saw her smiling. My heart fluttered. She was seriously into me. Maybe we'd even kiss in the cinema? That thought made me nervous, and I hoped I wasn't sweating. I always sweat when I'm nervous. She came into the kitchen and said, No wonder you're so pretty, Kelsey. Your parents are seriously attractive. I just laughed, but could feel myself blushing. We headed to the cinema room, and halfway through the movie, I heard my parents coming home. I was pretty bummed because Rosie hadn't even made a move, not even to hold my hand. I tried the whole yawn and stretch thing to put my arm around her, but she didn't even notice. Anyway, I thought maybe we should pause the movie and she could come meet my parents. I suggested this to her and she completely froze. She suddenly made up an excuse about needing to get home quickly. And was there maybe a way she could sneak out? She said she felt awkward around parents because they always judged her piercings and she didn't want them thinking she was a bad influence on me. I was kind of confused but told her she could take the back door and they wouldn't notice. Afterwards, I felt kind of weird. Maybe she didn't like me after all. Or maybe she was trying to protect me in case my parents weren't okay with me liking girls. She'd been in such a rush that she left her guitar. I took it through to the kitchen and left it on one of the chairs and said goodnight to my parents. The next morning when I came downstairs, my dad was holding the guitar and he had this odd expression on his face. When he spotted me standing there, he quickly put it down and in an angry tone he said, Kelsey, whose guitar is this? Why is it here? I couldn't understand why he was angry. I said it was my friends from work and that she left it here by accident. 
Then he got even angrier and said, why did I think it was okay to have a friend over from work without asking? Then he demanded to know who this friend was. I told him to chill out, and then I just grabbed the guitar and headed for the door. Who did he think he was, shouting at me for having a friend? I was so anxious on the way to work. What if my dad just like had a sense that I was into this girl? Rosie was her usual cheery self at work and apologized for rushing off the night before. I asked her if she wanted to hang out again sometime and maybe we could play our guitars for real this time. She said she'd like that and that she was free that afternoon. I knew my dad would be at work, so I told her to come over. That shift went by so slowly. At lunch, Rosie went out to meet a friend and so I had to eat lunch by myself. We cycled back to my place together and I noticed my mom was at home. I asked Rosie if that was okay with her and she seemed a bit uncomfortable but said it was okay. My mom was the sweetest woman, so she had nothing to worry about. When my mom met Rosie, she said, Oh, so nice to meet you, Rosie. You must be Kelsey's new friend that she's been talking about so much. Such a pleasure to meet you. I was not prepared for the way Rosie responded. She had this strange look on her face. It was the first time I ever saw her look cold. She just looked at my mom and said, Oh, you look so different in real life. Those photos of you in the hall must be pretty old, right? Then she just walked away and headed for my room. I was mortified. My mom tried to shake it off and feigned a little smile. I knew I'd be in deep trouble later. Both my mom and my dad wouldn't want me hanging out with this kind of girl. When I got to my room, I didn't say anything. I thought she might at least apologize, but she was just looking at my bookshelves and didn't seem to care. I tried not to let it bother me. After all, she'd said she gets awkward around parents. I put on some music and lay down on my bed. Where's your guitar, Rosie? I suddenly asked her. I realized she hadn't brought it with her. Her eyes widened a bit, and then she stuttered and said, Um, oh, uh, I actually left it at my friend's at lunchtime. Sorry, Kelsey. I tried not to get annoyed, but I felt kind of jealous that she had this other friend. Why don't you call your friend and ask if we can swing over and pick it up? She said her friend was working and wouldn't reply to his messages whilst at work. My heart sank. I knew it. This friend was probably her boyfriend. What had I been thinking? She wasn't into me at all. Suddenly. I felt kind of sick and didn't want her in my room. Rosie, sorry, I'm actually not feeling very well. Can we take a rain check and hang out tomorrow instead? She looked a bit surprised, but said sure, and that if I wasn't feeling well tomorrow, I could call in sick and she'd cover for me. I cried a bit when she left, and then I felt stupid for crying and told myself to get over it, and I took a nap instead. When I woke up, I was feeling hungry, so I headed downstairs to make a snack. My dad had just arrived home, and he was unpacking groceries from the car. I went to help him, but he told me it was okay, he'd manage. I still went to help him, and as I pulled out the last grocery bag, I froze. You won't believe what was hidden at the back of my dad's trunk. I knew it as soon as I saw it. With those cherry stickers, it couldn't be anyone else's. Why on earth did my dad have Rosie's guitar in his car? This made no sense. I'd given it back to her today, and she left it at her friend's place. And then it dawned on me, and I felt like I was going to throw up. The way she looked at my family photos, the way she'd insulted my mom, the look of recognition on her face when she hired me and had seen my surname, the fact she studied English lit. Oh my goodness, Rosie was having some kind of affair with my dad. I felt so overwhelmed. I couldn't deal with my dad right now and I didn't want to hurt my mom. I knew what I had to do. I jumped on my bicycle and cycled to Rosie's apartment. I'd never been there before, but I didn't even knock. I just barged through the door and when she saw me, she looked so shocked. I was so angry that I just started screaming at her. How could you? I saw your guitar in my dad's car, pretending to be my friend just so you could get closer to my dad. What kind of sicko are you? He's a married man. She didn't even try and deny it. She didn't even cry or try and beg for forgiveness. She just looked at me and said, it's not my fault your dad likes me. Friends in the family, right? You liked me too, didn't you? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And I didn't know what to do. My mom would be devastated. But I had to tell her, and I had to confront my dad. I told Rosie I never wanted to see her again. And I flung her guitar onto the ground and secretly felt super satisfied when it cracked in two. Served her right. When I got home, my dad was sitting outside on the porch. He knew I knew. And he just sat there with his head in his hands. I knew he told my mom. I could hear her crying inside. I went straight to comfort her. It all felt so surreal. Just a few hours ago, I brought this girl to my house that I had a crush on. And this whole time, she was sneaking around having an affair with my dad. My dad could lose his job. And at this moment, I hope he did. He deserved punishment too. I sat with my mom as she cried. 
and I apologized over and over again for having brought that monster into our home. My dad packed a bag and went to stay with his brother, and mom and I thought about what to do next. Obviously, I quit my job at the cafe. I didn't want to be anywhere near Rosie. I felt crushed. I'd lost the girl I liked, and now my dad too. I was just so embarrassed. And if it wasn't already bad enough, what happened next just sent another blow to my family. Clearly, Rosie was sick in the head. The next week in the newspapers, there was a whole story about it. Rosie had sold their story to the reporters, and now my dad would never be able to work as a professor again. Surely, it couldn't get any worse. Well, for my family, it did. Dad did lose his job, and he lost us too. Of course, Mom filed for divorce, and it's almost been a year since it all happened. And we're only just recovering now. It has been the hardest year, and the newspapers have published all the details. Their affair had been going on for more than a year, and she'd even been to our house before. There was a photo of them in our pool. No wonder she'd known where that bathroom was that time. Honestly, the whole thing just disturbs me so much, and I'm glad it's in the past. I've decided I definitely don't want to be like Rosie when I grow up. And as for mom and me, well, we're better off without dad. Maybe we'll forgive him one day, but right now, it's still too raw. Anyway, onwards and upwards.